What's up, guys? So, uh, I've been meaning to make this video for a while now, kind of give y'all an update of what's been happening the past few months, kind of let everybody in, why I've been gone, why I haven't been doing anything on the channel, uh, why I haven't been to races, why I haven't really been active, uh, you know, going to races, working on the car, stuff like that. Um, driving around in Big Red, Valkyrie's with me. Um, hopefully, driving will distract me enough that I won't get too emotional in this video. Uh, but I just wanted to give y'all, you know, a rundown of what's been happening. I want to start off by saying that the people that have supported me in the Mustang community, my friends and family all over the country, uh, the support has been amazing, and uh, my niece Leah and I have greatly appreciated everything that uh, everybody has been doing. Um, so, start from the beginning. Uh, back in August, uh, me, my mom, and my grandmother all got COVID. Um, my mom and I got it first. My grandmother was actually already in the hospital with a broken foot. And so she didn't get it until she was released from the hospital and came back home. And by that time, my mom and I had already had COVID for about a week. So mom and I got COVID. Don't really know who got it first. Mom was the first one to get tested and she was positive. But I don't think she's the first one to have it because she works from home. So she doesn't really interact with other people on a daily basis. So I don't think she was the first one to get it. But she was the first one to get tested and tested positive. I went and got tested and tested positive. So for the next week, we were, you know, just at home feeling, you know, kind of just under the weather, sick, you know, we were sick shit. Uh, you know, dizziness, uh, breathing problems hadn't started yet, but mostly just dizziness and weakness and stuff like that. So about a week later, I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday, like last week of August, um, but my mom started having breathing problems. She went to the hospital. Next day I was having the same problems. I went to the hospital. My asthma came back, which I haven't had asthma problems since like middle school. Like I haven't used an inhaler in probably 15 years. And so when my asthma came back, I was like, okay, this is, this is getting serious. Uh, so I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday that my mom went and then I went the day after. So it had been Tuesday or Wednesday. And then that Friday, my grandmother went because she started having breathing problems and uh, running a fever. I'm not sure if she got tested, uh, but she started doing the same symptoms we had. So she went in that Friday. Well, that following Monday, I was still on oxygen, arthritis had kicked into overdrive I wasn't able to move uh, it took all the energy I had just to roll over in bed uh, it was just not a fun time in the hospital uh, and that Monday they were saying how my grandmother was probably not going to make it um, so they put me in this chair with my they had me on oxygen and nitrogen put me in this special chair so that all my tanks could come with me. They pushed me up to her room. Uh, it was probably 2, 2.30, something like that. Uh, I saw her. She wasn't responsive, like she couldn't talk, but the thing was that she said that she didn't want to be intubated. She didn't want a tube in her. She didn't want all of this stuff. So they pretty much were like, okay, well, if you're not going to want any of that, this is going to be it. You know, we'll give you some painkillers, make it as, you know, smoothly as possible. And so by the time I saw her, she wasn't talking or anything, but she was able to squeeze my hand and, you know, respond to stuff that I had said. So, uh, I saw her about 
2, 2.30, and within the next hour and a half, they called and said that she had passed. So, my grandmother passed away end of August, beginning of September. I forget the exact date. Um, meanwhile, me and my mom are still in the hospital. So, uh... I'm going to get real in this video and kind of not leave as a lot of stuff out. Um, sorry if it makes family members mad or anybody mad, but I, I just want to put it all out there. That way everybody knows what's happening uh, in my current situation. So, where mother passes, I get out of the hospital later that week. Um, was able to kind of walk around the hospital room, but I still needed oxygen. Uh, so they sent me home with oxygen. Um, mom was still on oxygen and nitrogen uh, blend and was improving day by day, but what wasn't, was all right, sorry about that. Uh, I guess my camera decided to just wanted to shut off. Uh, anyway, what I was saying was, uh, grandmother passed away that Monday. I was sent home Thursday on oxygen. Uh, mom was still on oxygen, nitrogen blend on the CPAP. Hi, Valkyrie. Uh, but she was improving day by day. Uh, that next what day of the week it was but that next week my uncle went ahead and had uh, my grandmother's funeral I think it was Tuesday or Wednesday uh, kind of upset my mom a lot you know obviously it was her mother as well as my uncle and you know she was my mom was obviously still in the hospital still not feeling good she was she, she couldn't make it. I was still on uh, uh, oxygen at the time, could barely walk, uh, was pretty much just lounging around at home, uh, and so I, I couldn't go, but my niece and nephew went, um, and, you know, there was some family drama happening between my sister and my uncle, and that whole situation, I mean, God, I could make a whole separate video about that, but, uh, she didn't go, but, you know, there was some tension there between her, him, and then me, Lee, and Lex, but see, me, Lee, and Lex have been staying at the house, or Lex was staying at the house, and then he went back to his, uh, grandparents, but, Leah and I, you know, we were at the house the entire time and we kind of got stuck in the middle of a feud that we didn't even know was happening. But anyway, so Uncle at the funeral kind of made my mom upset. I, I really didn't feel either way. Uh, I was close with Nana, but not as close as Leah was. Uh, you know, Leah, my niece, she was close to Nana, I was close to my mom. You know, that, that was kind of how the, the family dynamic in the house was. Uh, so, when Nana passed, honestly, it, le it lifted a weight off of my shoulders because it lifted a weight off of my mom's shoulders, or at least I thought at the time. Because for the past 15, 20 years, my mom has been taking care of her mom, my grandmother. You know, uh, my grandmother, about 10, 15 years ago, started, you know, having these falls, breaking bones, not able to walk really at all. Uh, you know, it was every two weeks she would want to get her hair done. Well, that was a whole friggin', you know, event, was trying to get her out of the house, into the car, out of the car, to the, you know, barber shop out of the barbershop back into the you know it was just a whole ordeal uh you know sometimes she wouldn't be able to make it to the restroom uh i know in the past probably five years she's fallen a lot more like it was probably every three months we were either having to try to pick her up off the floor either in the bathroom
bathroom, in her bedroom. Uh, if we weren't able to do it, we would have to call EMS, have them come pick her up. If she broke anything, one time she passed out. Uh, she wasn't really feeling that good. I don't know what she was actually sick with, but she passed out in my arms. Like, I was in front, my mom was behind her. We were trying to get her back to her bed, and her she I thought she died because her eyes rolled into the back of her head and she just went limp and fell into my arms. And so we had to put her on the ground, get EMS. They took her to the hospital. She ended up recovering from that. Uh, but it was just kind of like a, a thing that always weighed heavy on my mom was, oh my God, what happens if something else happens? You know, kind of a, you know, just a, a stress thing that really didn't need to be a thing. And so for me, I was like, okay, now that Nana has passed, my mom will not be as stressed out about this. You know, she doesn't have to take care of her mom anymore. And that's what I thought at the time. And that's what, you know, I believe that, you know, yes, it is a sad thing, but it was more fortunate than unfortunate. You know, it, it's, it was just such a burden on my mom to take care of her mom that I felt like, okay, this is going to be a good start. So, um, I didn't really feel bad about missing her funeral, but I know my mom obviously did. Uh, so about a week later, mom is improving. Uh, it's actually, so September 9th was my birthday. I was, it probably took me about a week being at home recovery on the oxygen to finally be able to function without oxygen. Um, and so I was able to do that. I was able to go to the hospital and see mom and she was improving. Uh, they got her down to dress oxygen uh, and they were starting to her physical you know, routines and, you know, physical therapy and stuff like that to get her up, out of bed, walk around the room. So the first time that she actually walked around her bed in a month was on my birthday. I got to see her walk around her bed, sit back down, uh, and it was a big deal, you know. this is a good start, you know, give it another week of therapy, she'll be coming home. Well, that next weekend, uh, they moved her to kind of this recovery place, uh, part of the hospital. I forget the name, but it's pretty much when you go when you're getting off of anesthesia. So you have a bunch of people in one room. Uh, and the only thing that's really separating the beds are curtains. But it's all just one big room. You're not in your individual room. Um, and they moved her to this, like the previous week, and she went down. Her vitals went down. She was freaking out. Uh, you know, her anxiety got to her, and she was freaking out. So they had to move her back to her own room. Well, for whatever reason, they moved her back to this place right before they were going to discharge her. Well, she fell off again. You know, just anxiety got to her, vitals dropping, you know, all of this. So again, they get her back to her own room. Well, now this time, I don't know what kind of medication they started giving her, but she wasn't recovering as quickly as she was the last time, you know, because the last time they did it, you know, she was able to recover fairly quickly. Uh, but then the, the next time they did it, when they put her back into her own room, she just wasn't improving as quickly as she did the first time. They had her on the oxygen-nitrogen blend again, and they it just, she wasn't getting off of it, you know, they, they would try to lower it, it wouldn't work, so they had to bump it back up, and 
so it got to the point where she uh they they pretty much gave her a decision they were like we might have to intubate you and we might have to put a tracheotic tube in you now not through the neck but they went through her mouth to be able to pump her lungs you know with the oxygen nitrate combo directly into her lungs instead of through the CPAP mask that she had been using. And so this is kind of the beginning of the end, you know. Uh, and so we, she said yes. Before she went under, you know, I was there. Phyllis was there, my sister. And she kind of held my hand and she was like, I'm scared. Like, don't 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 be scared mom this is gonna work you know you're gonna be back we're gonna be back racing you know you'll be fine so that happens uh, she's on that for a few days and then you know I'm still going up there every day I can because now I'm back at work you know I'm back working uh, so I'm only able to see her you know Friday Saturday Sunday are my days off so I'll go up there every single day and then, like, days that I open and I get off at, like, you know, 4, then I would run by the hospital before going home. So I'm still seeing her every day. And then when they intubate her and put the tube in her, you know, she obviously she's out. She's, you know, they knock her out. So she's not able to talk or anything. But I still go up there. I still see her, you know, talk to the doctors and everybody. See, you know, if she's improving on the train. Well, a few days into this, they say that her kidneys are failing. And I'm like, okay. And so they're like, well, we're gonna give her medication for that. Uh, we don't think we have to put her on dialysis yet, but that may become a thing if this doesn't improve. I'm like, okay. So they start that. They start giving her this medication for her kidneys to try to flush out her system few days after that they say you know uh, we don't think she's improving lung capacity wise you know we we feel like what we're doing you know they have the machine maxed out and it's kind of pumping her lungs to the point where if they try to give it more they'll start tearing and I'm like okay so what do you know I asked kind of how her kidneys are because that was the big concern last time and she they were like well her kidney function really doesn't matter at this point if we can't get her lungs to work on their own and so I'm like okay well obviously the two are related because two weeks ago she was walking around her room you know, she was perfectly walking around her room, talking, you know, about to be sent home, you know, like, and then once she got here, and y'all put her on this, and then her kidneys started failing, and it's kind of like, okay, what, what, what happened between, in the, you know, her getting about to come home to now she might not make it. So, we get that, you know, they, they do what they can, uh, finally they come in, they said, it's not going to work, you know, we, we've done all we can, she's not pulling through, you know, y'all need to come up here and make a decision, so my sister and I go up there and make the decision, they said that she's been like this for so long that she might start having brain damage because there's not enough oxygen getting to her brain and I was like that's it you know because that was the one thing mom said that whatever happened you know we were racing you know we were traveling around the country she wanted to go somewhere by a farm you know and have her horses so she said that if if anything happened to her in which she was not able to do that anymore that it would not be worth it. And that's what I told the dog, that's what I told my sister. And so we ended up saying, all right, we need to pull the plug then. 
because if she's not going to come back to how she was, you know, then there's no point of continuing, you know, keeping her alive because that's, that's not what she wants. She wants to live, you know, not just be alive. So we end up, you know, telling them, go ahead, pull the trach out. And she passed away later that day. So within, and it was literally like a month after my grandmother had passed. Now my mom has passed. And so that, you know, it's just been, you know, just a shitty past two, three months now. Um, so mom passes away. We have a celebration service at church for her uh, we and now now that you know I'm healthy enough to kind of function and now that you know the entire time that we're waiting for mom to recover is because we have Nana's will and all of that shit and the house that me and my niece are currently living in is tied up in this will. And the whole reason we were waiting to do anything was so that once mom recovered, then she could, you know, get the house under her name because the house actually went to her. Well, since my mom ended up passing away as well, now we're at the point where, okay, where, who does the house go to? Well, my uncle starts trying to figure everything out, and he ends up finding out that one of my cousins, who actually lives out of state, ended up becoming the beneficiary after my mom. For whatever reason, my grandmother put, you know, my mom as the first beneficiary, and then this cousin as the second beneficiary. Uh, so... Now she's having to figure out what's happening to the house. Well, everybody here is kind of like, well, you and Leah, you know, my niece, have been living here the entire time. If y'all can afford it, y'all can stay. You know, my sister, who, if the house sold, would have got money. My uncle, who is the house sold, would have got money. They both said, we don't care about the money. If y'all want to stay here and y'all can afford it, that's what we're going to do. Well, that's not how my cousin sees it. She wants to sell the house, give people their money, split it up, you know, and that way everybody's happy. And it's like, no, that's not the case. Everybody would be happy if Leah and I were able to stay in the house, you know. So, full hoopla coming over on that. Uh, I still don't know what the outcome is because we still don't know how much the house is worth. We don't know how much... Uh, the house would be split up, you know, we don't know any of that stuff, so I'm hoping that within the next few weeks that we're able to come to a conclusion on the house, whether or not Leah and I can stay there, or are we going to be homeless, you know, and so that's kind of my situation right now. Past three months, my grandmother has passed away, my mom has passed away. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to live in my house anymore. Kind of the cliff notes. My future. Still don't know. But it all depends on whether or not I'm going to be staying in the house. Uh, if I'm staying in the house, cool. Uh, I'll continue to work at where I'm at. Or maybe I'll get a little bit better job here in Houston. If I'm not able to stay at my house, then I'll try to find a job out of Houston. I, I love this place. I love living here, but the atmosphere is now more, you know, uh, in the, in the racing community, it's more, you know, people, yeah, they're located here, but they don't race here. You know what I'm saying? They go other places to race because now the only really good racetrack we have is closing at the end of next year uh, Houston Raceway Park so it's kind of like everybody is going everywhere else to try to find races to start establishing themselves in these other cities even though they live here so 
I want to move somewhere where I could continue to race. Maybe it'll be a little bit easier to find races, race tracks nearby, stuff like that. So I've been looking at like Tennessee, uh, even up toward Dallas because there's a couple tracks up there. Uh, out toward Florida, even though Florida is really expensive right now. You know, somewhere where I can get established in the racing community and continue to do what I've been doing. Um, another thing I want to start, I want to start more on the YouTube. Um, I don't know how much more I can do racing wise other than going to races and filming them. Um, cause I'm not really doing too much to the car right now. Before everybody got sick, uh, my nephew and I were stripping out the interior and getting all the, uh, Dynamat out of it, sound deadening. Continue to do that. I'm hoping after we do that, car will be high, you know, low 11s, high 10s. If I run a 10 NA, I'm boosting the car. Um, so, you know, that's kind of where the car's at. So I, the racing will kind of be the same that y'all have been seeing this past year. Uh, you know, the instead of the 12-0 index, I'll probably be in the 11-0 index, but it's still kind of, you know, street car takeover, stuff like that. Um, but what I want to start is a gaming podcast channel. Uh, it's still going to be mostly car related, you know, whether it be racing, video games, uh, Forza, Need for Speed, uh, or, you know, podcasts with my friends talking about cars, um, you know, stuff like that. I feel like that's what I want to start. I've already made a gaming channel, but I haven't posted anything on it yet i literally made it today made a twitch well actually i'm trying to get my twitch back made a discord today uh made a patreon today but i don't think i'll be using patreon i just made it just in case but i haven't made tiers or anything like that and i i don't want to promote it just because i i don't like begging for money i'd rather give y'all a product that y'all can you know view uh, but that's something i want to get established but i don't want to establish a gaming setup at my current house if i'm not going to be staying there um so that's kind of what's been happening the past few months that's kind of what i want to happen in the near future within the next couple months um thank y'all for again for all the support you know between alex flores uh you know the guys over at lawn the guys that are tuned by lawn that follow me on instagram everybody's been so supportive in this community and i just appreciate it uh it's a beautiful day outside uh i'll probably be running around with my dog and uh yeah, thank y'all so much again for all y'all's support. And here's to a, a new beginning, I guess. See y'all later.